In this video, I'm going to talk about constant torque models. These are a simple model using the equations we've just seen that's often very useful for dealing with how fast something is rotating after a given time. They're basically a perfect analogy to constant acceleration models for linear motion. Imagine you, know, you accelerate at 4 meters per second squared, how far will you've got after an hour? It's exactly the same sort of question, only now instead of asking how far you go, we're asked what angle have you rotated by, and instead of what acceleration, what angular acceleration, or what torque. So let's do a worked example to show you how this works. Let's imagine we have a helicopter which applies a torque to its rotor blades. It's got three blades and it's applying a torque tau to them. Let me draw a very bad helicopter. And they're starting off at rest and as it applies the torque they'll start rotating. And let's say that each of the blades has length L and mass M, and there are three blades. The sort of thing we might want to know is, for example, if it starts off at rest, how long will it take until it's made one rotation? Okay, so what we're asking is, what's the time needed to achieve a given angle? So that's the same for linear motion as what's the time needed to achieve a given distance. So the equation is going to be the angle equals the starting angle plus the starting angular speed times time plus half the angular acceleration times time squared. That's the analogue of s equals ut plus half at squared for linear motion. Now, the starting angle, let's call it 0. We also know the blades are starting at rest, so that's also 0. So this is the only term we need to worry about. So what's the angular acceleration? We don't know that. In this case, what we know is the torque. However, so it's like we don't know the acceleration, we know the force. So now we use the analog of F equals MA, which is the torque equals the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Now we're going to assume that the torque and the rotation are all in the same plane. They're all going around like this. So that means we could ignore the vector nature of these things and just treat them as scalars. If something was spinning this way and you were applying a torque at a different angle, then you'd have to worry about the vector nature. But we can ignore that for the moment, and normally you ignore it for constant torque problems. OK, so we know the torque equals I times the angular acceleration, so we need to find out what the moment of inertia is. If we go to a table, that we find that for a rod moving around the centre, the moment of inertia is equal to one-third mass times its length squared. That's for one of these, there are three, so for the total, we can get rid of this, it's going to be ml squared, so the torque equals ml squared alpha, so the angular acceleration alpha equals torque over ml squared. OK, let's substitute that into here, and we find that the angle rotated is equal to half times angular acceleration, torque over ml squared times t squared. So if you want to find what time is needed to go through one complete rotation, for one complete rotation, theta will be equal to 2 pi. So rearranging, we get that t squared equals... 2 pi times 2 ml squared over the torque equals 4 pi ml squared over the torque. So t is equal to the square root of that. Let's check this. If we want to check units, a torque is a unit of force times length, so newtons meters. So torque as a unit of newtons meters. So we've got newton meters at the bottom. 4 pi, those are just numbers. So then we've got kilograms and 
meters squared on the top. Now force has units kilogram meters per second squared. So this has got to have units. So we've got kilogram meters squared all over kilogram meters per second squared times meters. So kilograms cancel, the meters squared cancel. S to the minus 2 at the bottom, so that comes out as S times squared, which comes out as S, which is indeed time, so that checks. We can also check functional form. Uh, if the torque is bigger, it will take less time to rotate, which makes sense. If the blades are heavier, it will take longer. If the blades are longer, it will take longer. So all those things make sense. Check on functional form. Limiting cases, if there's no torque, then the time is infinity, 1 over 0, which makes sense. If they weighed an infinite amount, then it would take an infinitely long time. So that's all making sense. So this is a plausible answer. OK, that's one type of question. Another one might be, instead of asking how long will it take to reach a given angle, we could ask how long would it take to reach a given angular speed. Let's say 10 radians per second. Well, in that case, it's very simple. If you had a linear motion, you want to know you're accelerating at 5 meters per second squared, how long will it take you to get to 10 meters per second? You just divide the final acceleration, the final velocity, by the rate. And it's the same here. If we worked out the angular acceleration here, so the time taken to reach a particular angular speed would just be that angular speed divided by this. So you can see that by using analogies to linear equations, you can solve all these sorts of problems.